Now, if you've already seen our FM2 integrated GPU showdown against Ivy Bridge, then good for you. You're subscribed and you watch our videos. Wow. If you haven't already seen it, you can check the video out here and I'll have Diesel put in a little whoop kind of thing so you can click on that, check out that video. This video is totally different. We're going to throw out the integrated GPU and we're going to put the A10 and A8 series APUs up against CPUs from Intel and from AMD's own range. We've gone with a dedicated graphics card, the GeForce GTX 660 Ti, because right now it represents a pretty good value out there and very high performance. Takes the GPU bottleneck out of the equation and let's see how it fares, how this new FM2 platform stacks up against all the competition out there. <laughs> Now, what exactly is an AMD Trinity? So they're new A8s and A10s. These are an evolutionary change on the last generation Lanos on FM1. So we're getting a faster GPU, we're getting better turbo core technology, that is to say that when we're using fewer threads, we're boosting up the clock speeds more. We're also getting better instructions per clock with pile driver cores, and we're getting a new socket. So yeah, it's like, Pretty much a total overhaul. So let's have a look at the performance from a purely CPU standpoint. And I apologize for the total you know, professionalism of just opening Excel and then clicking on show slideshow, but you guys can see how we work behind the scenes. Bearing in mind, A8s and A10s are not as expensive as things like 3570Ks and 3770Ks, okay? We're looking at CPU level performance that is about 10 to 15% slower than a 3220. That is a Core i3. So once we get past the integrated GPU, where if you guys didn't watch that video, make sure you watch it because the A10s and A8s just rock the house. In terms of gaming performance with a dedicated graphics card, there's probably better solutions out there, even from AMD's own lineup on the AM3 Plus platform. That said, if you're not looking at a $300 graphics card to go with your $100 CPU, which very few people are, you might be looking at a lower end graphics card and you can use hybrid Crossfire in order to throw a low end graphics card and run that in Crossfire with the GPU that's built into your APU. Uh, APU, CPU, GPU, FPU. Crisis 2, very high presets. So you can see once again, we're about equivalent to a Core i3 in terms of the sheer CPU gaming power. And our final benchmark, StarCraft 2, we are falling behind the Core i3, unfortunately, in this one. Remember, this is a pretty much an apples to apples comparison. This is a quad core to it. Is this even a quad core? Ooh, it's a dual core with hyper threading. Okay, well, bearing in mind that games that don't require a ton of threads, if you haven't already seen it, I'm gonna do this again check out our how many cores are actually needed for gaming episode. We find that most games don't take advantage of more than two cores anyway, which makes something like a Core i3 look like a pretty darn good value on a graph like this. And that pretty much wraps it up. Now there's more to an APU's performance or a CPU's or GPU's, whatever it is, than just gaming performance. So let's have a look at Cinebench to give us some idea of where it stands in from a 3D rendering perspective. So it pretty much falls again in line with the Core i3, which depending on the pricing of the various models and how it all falls into line, might be pretty much where it belongs. Remember, FM2 is a low end socket compared to AM3+, Plus, which is the performance socket where you see those six core and eight core processors that AMD's sort of, you know, trumpeting about all the time because they have eight cores. I would trump it if I had eight cores. I've just got six cores, you know, as if. Um, Cinebench OpenGL, okay, so here we see the A6, or the A8 and the A10 actually pull ahead significantly from their brethren. This relies on the GPU performance of the processor, so this is an example of how that synergy between a CPU and a GPU can actually work out pretty well if you build in a powerful GPU. Now when it comes to Passmark, which is one of the more relevant CPU-centric tests, we see that they do pull ahead of the i3, but again fall short of the 3570K and the 3770K, which again are in different price brackets compared to these, uh, these more value segment CPUs. Which leads us into FutureMark PCMark 7. So this is in points, more is better, and you can see once again our A8 and our A10 fall pretty much in line with our Core i3 with these more expensive processors, well, you know, being more expensive and more better in general. Next, 
we get into some rendering performance. So we see how these pile driver cores stack up against, again, the Core i3, where performance is within about 10%. And then you knock about half of that time off once you throw in a quad core with hyper threading and a much more faster architecture. Again, higher performance, higher cost CPU. I mean, I know these graphs all pretty much say the same thing, but we wanted to show you a variety of different usage models before drawing any conclusions. So the conclusion at the end of this is basically if you're using it with the integrated GPU, the new Trinity APUs rock the house. If you're not using it with an integrated GPU, it looks like they're pretty competitive with the Intel Core i3, but if you're gonna throw a super dedicated graphics card on there, you might be better off with a different choice. All comes down to your personal preference. Thanks for checking out this episode of NCIX Tech Tips, and don't forget to subscribe.